What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Eggs Avenue Show on the Eggs Avenue YouTube channel. As usual, I'm Patrick Hennessy. That's Dan Rourke. Dan, how are we doing on this fabulous Friday morning? You know, Pat, when you asked me for the first time four times ago, I was doing pretty solid, but we had some te- technical issues. Shout out Zoom. You've been really good to us, but not so much today. I'm chilling, dude. It's a week or two in spring training now. WBC, WBC starting up next week. I can't speak apparently, too, so that's that's good. How are you, Pat? <laughs> Uh, life is good. Can't complain. Uh, like you said, WBC starting up next week. Um, spring weather's coming up soon. Uh, regular season's coming up soon. Gary Sanchez is about to be a Yankee. We'll get into that later on. But yo, let's get right into topic number one. And that is our Garrett Cole 2023 season preview. I've been, bro, I've been waiting on this one. Just because we all know how much I love Garrett Cole and how high I am on him uh, coming into the season. Just because I think that it's kind of like the coronation. I think that's like a really good word to describe it. Maybe it doesn't fit, but it fits in my mind. I think it's the coronation of Garrett Cole in pinstripes. Um, And you know what? I know we like we talk about it all the time, kind of like has Garrett Cole lived up to his contract? Um, Me and you, we both think so. But I know that there's a lot of naysayers. There's a lot of doubters that honestly, he shut up a lot of them uh, in the 2022 postseason when he just showed up and was the main reason the Yankees even advanced to the ALCS. Um, however, I'm sure there's a, a few of them that are still lingering, but overall, I think in 2023, he's going to silence the rest of them, um, whichever ones he didn't silence in the postseason last year, they're going to be silenced this year. And I think Garrett Cole is going to have an absolute massive season. Dude, me too. And yeah, as for the playoffs in terms of an individual performance, he got that monkey off his back. He can settle in now. I mean, one of my favorite moments from not just October last year, although there were very few of those, but the regular season as a whole or the whole season, was when Cole getting interviewed after ALDS game one, right after finally getting an October standing ovation from Yankee Stadium. And you could see how happy he was. And I think that kind of goes into my outlook for the 2023 season. I think he enters this this year at a really in a really good place. And that has me, you know, we'll get into it with the over-unders and all, but my pick for Garrett Cole this year, barring Jacob DeGrom making 30 starts, I got Cole running away with a Cy Young award this year. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that that's totally fair. And Cole's also my Cy Young pick. I mean, that could have been one of like the over-unders. I mean, are you 100% confident or 90% confident in Garrett Cole winning Cy Young this year? Because I'm so high on that bar. Um, Like I said, I think he's going to have an absolutely massive season. That's why, yeah, you want to say something? Well, I was going to say the only thing that could hurt him, we've seen this in the past, Rodon will also be competing for that as well. And sometimes, sure. like we, we've seen it with MVP before, if two players on the same team competing for an award, the votes can sometimes be split. But, hey, yo, I mean, in the end, we'll, we'll take that, actually. Like, that's kind of a best-case scenario if we have to run into that issue. We're both Rodon and yeah. Cy, uh, Cole or Cy Young candidates, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I was going to say, I mean, regarding Cole's role for this year, I mean, that's kind of what the Yankees are expecting him to be. That's what Yankee fans are expecting him to be, uh, a perennial Cy Young uh, candidate. And I think that he just has to live up to that this year. Like, you're you're at the top of a very dominant rotation, um, and he's expected to be the ace. I'm sure with the addition of Rodon, like you just mentioned, I think that that's going to take a little bit of pressure off his back because, bro, in in his first couple seasons, I mean, like we kind of said, like Nestor's cool. Nestor's like uh, been one of the best pitchers in the in the major leagues in the past couple seasons, but at the same time, he doesn't really have like that. He's not a dog. He's not a dog. I love Nestor. He's not a dog. Rodon is, and that I think could take a little bit of uh, pressure off Cole for sure. And I also going back to the attitude thing, not just with how I think he's a little more appreciated by Yankee fans now, but we saw it kind of start to turn by towards the playoffs last year. Earlier in the year, we saw Cole get pissed about some things, you know, say not always if somebody made an error, but if he made a mistake, he would really let his frustration show on the field. Billy Crystal. But, <laughs> yeah. Billy Crystal, the, the first pitch thing. We've seen some things that could understandably per, like perturb a Yankee fan a little bit like, yo, why are you acting like this? Regardless though, by October, if we remember that start against Houston, although it didn't, end up really working in our favor but it was Harrison Bader they made and Aaron Judge both like almost collided on a ball long story short they ended up yeah. falling in and dropping for a single and you saw Cole yell out to them like yo I got you now he ended up giving up a two-run shot after that but regardless that's a different Garrett Cole I think than we saw in April or any point with the Yankees and kind of points to is there like a he really is the captain of the pitching staff if there were one obviously not like unofficial title or anything like that but yeah, dude, I think Cole's in a really, really good spot going into the new year, both mentally and obviously physically. He's one of the best in the game. So yeah, man, let's uh some over unders, shall we? Yeah, dude, the over unders are always my favorite parts of these. Um, so over under 3.15 ERA in 2023, just for some context here, uh 3.50 ERA last year and then 3.23 in 2021. 
Yeah. Okay. So real quick, talking about ERA, I want to say this. Coca put up a three five again, and if he puts a, a two nine five in the playoffs once again, then to me that's that's a W. So it really is all about what you do in October. We know that that's kind of been like the common theme with us in the show, but. I'm going to go under. I have him putting up an even three ERA, a little 2011 CC Sabathia action I got going on. So, yeah, under. Yeah, I'm going to go under two, but I think it's going to be more significantly under. I think, listen, I like, we like it specific with ERAs, bro. I'm going to continue that trend. 273. I, I love say it. Cole's going to have a 273 ERA this season. Um, yeah, bro. I think that he's just really going to have a coming out party this year. And I feel like I say that every year with Cole. But for some reason, this year is different. I mean, I we we mentioned it with Bader, right? Where I, I was like, um, maybe like he carries over that postseason heroic energy into the start of the season. I think that Cole carries over that dog in him that he had in the postseason. And I think he rides it through the regular season this year. I think Cole un- understands the urgency that the Yankees kind of have just in terms of winning a title. Um, And I know like... There's always urgency, but for some reason this year kind of just feels like, bro, you like you just signed Judge to this massive contract. You just signed Rodon. Like you have to really win it all this year. Um, so yeah, I, I think that Colts just really gonna show out. Give me a yeah. two seven three. I'll be happy. And real quick, I just want to say because we talk about the regular season with Cole, not us necessarily, but just the Yankee fan base as if he's just imploded. But dude, even his worst years, we mentioned the three five last year. Before that, 3-2-3 three, three in 2021. Remember, that was a controversial year. He went 16-8, and eight, was phenomenal over yeah. 30 starts. Of course, you know, spider Tech was a part of that. Year before in 2020, 2 8 4 year eight in 12 starts. It was also good in the playoffs. So in the end, dude, it really was just that one start in Fenway, which he rightfully should be criticized for. But he's cleansed himself with that for me. It's proven, at least as far as my perspective, this dude can handle the pressure. And that's all we can ask for when it comes to being a Yankee, yeah. especially under a big contract. Another over-under here. Um, over under 17 and a half wins for context, uh, 13 wins in 2022 and then 16 wins in 2021. I'm going to go with over, not that wins are all that big a deal, but pitcher over unders are hard. I mentioned 2011 CC Sabathia. I have him putting up that season, which was 19 and eight with an even three ERA. But the real kicker here, Pat, will be, he's going to lead the American league in strikeouts, all of baseball actually with 270, which will be his highest since 2019, where he struck out 326. Don't think that's going to happen again, but yeah, overall numbers on Cole this year. I got him going 19 and eight, three year ray, 270 strikeouts. Yeah. Um, I have under, uh, probably like 15, 16. I mean, not that it really matters too no. much. Uh, just, yeah. I mean, that's just, that's what I feel inside, but one thing that I did want to ask you, and you kind of answered it um, in, in the last question, was over under, this one's off script, like 270 strikeouts. Well, I'll go with over on that since, yeah, I kind of already answered it. But, yeah, I, I would say so, especially because the coal I'm predicting to get will be the coal that we saw for, you know, October a lot. And also, you, you factor in those three starts in the beginning of the year. I don't know exactly what those strikeouts were, but you had those. There was also a stretch in August. I think if there's one critique I have of Cole and one improvement is I, I hope he doesn't have those stretches, just randomly bad starts. And if that's the case, then you're going to see a couple more gems in there. You're going to see a little bit more consistency. And with that, you would, I think, get more strikeouts. So, yeah, going along yeah. with all that I just said, I think definitely, yeah, over over 270. He was at, Bro. what, 257 last year, which broke uh, um, Gidry's record. So, yeah. Yeah, bro, I'm slamming the over so hard. I'm saying he gets 300. Let's do it, yo. Word, I'm yeah, so down. I mean, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm seeing like maybe not like as good as a 2019 Cole, but I think he's gonna be like very close to 2019 Cole this year. I'd love to see that. Of course, I do wonder what the uh, if like the new style of play will come into a factor with that. Like we should expect a little less strikeouts around the game generally, but. Not all that much, by the way. Like, I'm not why? to get into the whole the wait, rules wait, and stuff. Wait, why do you assume that? Well, they think, well, I don't assume that, but that's what the game is going for with the shifts and, and kind of all that, that players will no longer feel the need to only hit the ball out of the ballpark, which could lead to more contact-inducing swings because they can get I base can hits without sense. the shift. I don't think that's actually going to carry over as much as they think. That's the point I, I was about to make. Not that we should get into this whole thing, but it, something yeah. to consider, though, about pitchers. Just projecting anybody. We'll do it with Rizzo as well. The new rules will play a factor pretty much on every single player, so that's something to to keep in yeah. mind no yeah for sure um yo good yankee bad yankee i think this great, was kind of easy but great yankee embraces the tradition cares about winning wants to be here and what did i say about dj i made it times two with garrett cole he would fit perfectly on the 90s yankees which you know pat you guys at home know that's to me what i consider the ultimate compliment to a yankee so great 
great Yankee. Garrett yeah. Cole is. Yeah, bro. I'm going to have to agree. Um, He's not a good Yankee. He's an amazing Yankee. Um, I When I look at like guys who I consider like at the top of the totem pole on the New York Yankees, I would say Garrett Cole is probably number two to Aaron Judge. And then like right underneath him, you have like Stanton, Rizzo. But I don't think that anybody can ignore at this point, like what Garrett Cole means to this organization, not only on the field, but off the field, bro. He's a leader in that clubhouse. He's a dog. Just he, we know that he wants to win. He wants to win more than anybody else in that clubhouse. And he shows it. And that can kind of be like, a catch 22 because it's not always the best thing to show your emotion on your sleeve. But I love that Cole does it. I love everything about it. Eric Cole, amazing Yankee. Yeah. Last thing I'll say on it, I will mention how he does have to win a ring. You know, we talk about doing the contract again is a success. I a thousand percent, I don't regret a thing as if I was the one who signed him to it. But I'm glad the Yankees got Garrett Cole. However, in the end, and the same goes with Judge, we'll talk about it. We have talked about it. The ultimate success is a ring in October. So while I'll say all these good things about Garrett Cole in the end to make him, you mentioned the word amazing. I think I actually do want to keep it at great just for me personally, because that's the last tier there is, is amazing. And to me, that's where you, you win a ring. So one last monkey on Cole's back is yes, the team's performance, but Would it's you nice. Say amazing is the last tier. I would say, right. Yeah. Isn't amazing. The last uh, year. I would say like, if Cole won a ring, then he's like iconic or like, monumental nah i think multiple rings would go there i'm just saying like there is one last box to check or sure, two if you sure. want to include the Young, but ultimately it's really just the one sure. it's 20 but also so. at the end of the day at the end of the day like he can only do so much right so it's like the he, he kind of needs like a team it'll take more than just him well. for sure yeah yeah um all right cool so any any other thoughts about cole i feel like i kind of got everything off nope. my chest. love him love you cole yo also let us know in the comments on a scale of one to ten how much you love Garrett Cole? Because I'm at like a 30. I'm actually intrigued what people say because I know it's this might actually be a polarizing topic. Like we're saying all these, you know, oh, I know great things about him. But in the comments, like there are going to be people who don't like Garrett Cole. But yeah, we'll see. Um, Yo, getting into topic number two here. Uh, Anthony Volpe, bro. He's he's bro. He's the talk of the town in New York as of late. He's absolutely tearing the cover off the ball in spring training. Also, yo, that was. Bro, I don't think I've ever used that phrase before, tearing the cover off the ball, but I think you I'm going to start doing it more. Definitely have, bro. What are you talking about? I don't about? think I have. I don't think I have. Well, were you reading great. off the email you're saying? No, you didn't say that. Oh, I, that's what, I was surprised. You didn't I, even say that. Because I say that a lot, but that's like common baseball talk. Like you, no, I'm, I like I'm you. sure you've said that before, bro. I might have, but I don't, I don't yes. remember. But regardless, uh, Anthony Volpe is tearing the cover off the ball so far this spring. Um, and now like people are kind of being like, yo, if he's not on an opening day roster, I'm going to, I'm going to be pissed. And it starts that conversation up as to whether or not we think he's going to be on the opening day roster. I think me and you are both kind of on the same page where we think he should be, but he won't be at what point, like, do we start questioning whether or not the Yankees will just kind of shock everybody and put him on the opening day roster? Unfortunately, I'm still kind of on the mindset that like, it'll take like an otherworldly spring performance for them not to send him down. But fortunately, Pat, but like what, like, like, like what would otherworldly be? I think he needs to like hit six home runs bat close to 400. But the good thing is that he's capable of doing that. This dude is, he's incredible. It's as simple as that. I'm not sure if you watched the game in Pittsburgh today or not, but not even just the Homer, but everything he does, man, it's, it really is. It describes perfectly just watching Anthony Volpe, that stats don't tell us the whole story, which his stats are still very good. So you have those to go off of. But when you watch him play, especially as a Yankee fan, you realize like this team needs him, dude. And there's there's no way around it. And I honestly think, and this to me is almost kind of embarrassing to say, because I usually hate shit like this. I think it doesn't have any impact whatsoever. But I think us as a fan base kind of has to be like as vocal as possible about the fact that this needs to happen. Now, if Volpe ends up shooting the bed, like, None of this is a discussion anyways, obviously. But if, yeah, if he hits 400, six home runs, and the Yankees don't put him on the roster on opening day, don't go to opening day then. Like, honestly, I think, you know, while that's not going to factor into the decision or make their ultimate decision whatsoever, I do think, like, pressure from the fans, like, crazy about a player who is already good and would make the roster better. Like, if they're already on the fence about it, could it maybe tip them over? I don't know. I just think... I'm serious, dude. Like, if I had tickets for opening day, which I might, might change things up and go to opening day for once. If Volpe's not on the roster after having a phenomenal spring, I will not go. 
So that's a little much. I'm like, I, I listen. I if I he know- has a fin- not Pat, his 400 with six home runs, and like is a standout by far. And like say IKF, that's 150, and they carry Bro. him. At the end of the day, like you have to put yourself in the New York Yankees organizational shoes, and they are not going to bring him up on opening day just for the sake of. Bro, they're gonna lose a full year of service time just to have That's him up for an extra whack, three weeks. So, so wait, would you, but dude, you would do that though? Probably not. No, because you know I'm all about the so current, right? Then I, we I don't, don't gotta put it. ourselves in their shoes. Like I understand that logic no, no, for you a lot have of prospects. Because but sometimes you don't. No, but dude, you don't run the Yankees, right? So it's like you have to understand what they're doing because oh, at the end of the day, like. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. We have to put ourselves in, in their shoes to understand what's going to happen. Because well, that's why I started all by saying I don't think he's gonna gonna make it. But yeah, go on. But yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like I'm gonna be honest. Like, would I love Anthony Volpe to be the opening day starting shortstop? Yeah, just because I think if that's gonna be the guy that you're riding with for the majority of the season and for years to come, yeah, he should be your opening day guy, especially if he's proving it in spring. However, at the same time, I could understand the argument that they're going to use being like, yo, he hasn't gotten much time at AAA yet. We don't want to just throw him into the wolves at the major league level. Because I think also what happens with a lot of fans when they see a top prospect do well in spring training, they don't realize that that doesn't necessarily always translate to major league baseball. Yeah, you know sure. I mean? It's like, so it's like I'm not trying to get too caught up in in Anthony Volpe in, in particular having a hot spring, and because that doesn't necessarily prove that they're ready for the majors. So, and also I mean he didn't get that much experience in AAA last year, so no. I wouldn't be entirely opposed to Anthony Volpe starting the season in AAA for the first couple of weeks and having Oswald Peraza be the starting shortstop. However, if it's IKF as the starting shortstop, then I'll be a little bit more pissed off. But at the end of the day, it's three weeks of, what, a six-month-long season? Well, here's the thing. If the Yankees believe Volpe legitimately needs more seasoning, then, yeah, you, you keep him down in AAA for sure. My argument is that if on March 29th, the day before open day, or whenever you're finalizing the roster, if you can sit down and look at Anthony Volpe and decide this dude is makes us – a better team. The Yankees are a better team with Anthony Volpe on the roster. And by the way, that would probably also come with Peraza as well. I think you would probably put both of them on there, but that's me where it becomes a problem. If you think, all right, we're a better team with Volpe, but no, we're just going to hold him down for three to four weeks just to get another, another year of service time. That's me where it's a problem. If he needs more time at AAA, all right, yeah, you do it. I do want to mention one more thing though about Volpe and Peraza. I tweeted this earlier. Imagine the opening day, though, Pat, like the hype going sure. into it, bro. You wake up that morning and you know you're going to see both Anthony Volpe and Oswald Peraza in the lineup compared to IKF and Josh Donaldson, maybe like. No, I know. But also what we have to and I'm not trying to stretch this argument, but I think that what we also have to realize is Anthony Volpe is that guy, right? Like the Yankees have passed up on a countless number of top shortstop free agents for him. So they have to make sure that him coming up is perfect. They have to make sure that he's not going to come up and just be completely exposed by major league pitching, right? Well, then he wouldn't be ready, and then you do keep him down. That makes sense. My only argument is if you think he is ready, he should be on the opening day roster. That's all. Like nothing else. But that's also why I think – that's why I think opening day will be a huge risk for them because the only thing they'll have based off of is spring training, which is we we know it's not a good mm-hmm. representation. So I think that they would maybe rather see him how he does in AAA for the first few weeks and then call him up and kind of like not have it just be like throwing him into the fire on day one. Sure. That, hot take though, I think – sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, Hot take, I think last year if Volpe succeeded at AAA, he would have actually could potentially been a, a possibility for the MLB roster going into October. Yes, I actually think that. So if that were the case, big if obviously, you could almost look at a full month of spring training as being equivalent to a month in AAA, which if he did tear the cover off the ball, I won't go to the whole thing again. But my point, just to close it off, if he's ready, you put him on the roster. If not, then yeah, give him some more seasoning and that'll be fine. But sure. yeah. Sure. But as fans, like we can't, we can't, we can't be the judge of that. You know what I mean? So it really if comes he hits down 400, to the 400, And we'll never know the true answer insane. though. Yeah, I mean, right. hey, I don't think it's impossible he could actually be on the open-day roster, though. So we would get an answer if that happened, but it's definitely – it's well, not likely. I don't predict it to, to, that it's going to happen. Um, Yo, getting into topic number three, though, uh, the Yankees catching depth, taking a little bit of a hit as of late. Um, Not only – I mean, we know about the Vet finger injury. His finger was turned in blue. Um, but now Austin Wells has a fractured rib, and then also Josh Bro has an elbow injury. So that's three catching injuries in the past, what, week or so at this point? 
And now, Dan, that kind of re-sparks the conversation that we had as a little bit of a joke. What was that, like, a couple weeks ago? Where we were discussing, like, what are the odds the Yankees have a reunion with Gary Sanchez? Now, do we think that the likelihood has gone up at all? Now that the Yankees are down three catchers. Has it gone up? Yeah. I won't say it's likely, but, I like, I can't rule it out. And, bro, for those who, like, have always dreamt or over the last year have dreamt of Gary Sanchez returning to the Bronx, me included, you included. This is kind of the perfect storm, dude. He's still a free agent two weeks into camp, and the Yankees have already lost three catchers. Like, now I think it'd probably have to be a minor league deal, which I'm not so sure Gary would accept. But for those who are curious, and I imagine majority of fans watching at home are going to be, you know, opposed to this, but he placed 92nd percentile in barrel rate and hard hit hard hit rate last year. And we know that's kind of always been the case with Gary. He just needs to make contact. But what's interesting, Pat, is that the defense has also improved. Get this. I have a couple of numbers I want to read off to you. His caught ceiling rate jumped from 17% in 2021 to 28% last year. He had just four pass balls last year. Remember, 2017, 2018, Gary, he was closing in on almost 20 a season. I think he had like 16, 17, 18 one year. So that's good. His rate of total missed pitches, which is pass balls and wild pitch pitches, dropped from 62% to 35%. And he also went from being a negative pitch framer to a plus pitch framer. He wouldn't start up with Trevino, Pat. He wouldn't start up with Trevino. I'm not even saying he'd be necessarily be like the backup guy right away, but with clearly not so many jobs out there, if you can get Gary Sanchez on a minor league deal, him being the next guy up after something maybe happens to, to Higgy, Trevino, whatever, you know I wouldn't hate it. Yeah. That first of all, that was very in depth. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I will say I'm kind of on the boat where I wouldn't even give him a minor league deal, bro. I think that Gary Sanchez is more than deserving of a major league contract. I think I think, to be honest with you, while I think that obviously these injuries have made it a little bit more likely that the Yankees would sign Gary Sanchez, I still think that it's a little bit far-fetched just because I think Gary Sanchez deserves to be a starting catcher somewhere. And, bro, I think that I think he it's out there could... though. No, 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 no. I think it will be out there, especially if he tears the cover off the ball in the World Baseball Classic. Because don't forget, mm-hmm. he's he's going to be starting for Team Dominican Republic. That's true. So that's going to be big. Um, I think, And that's also why I think he hasn't accepted anything yet, just because I think that he thinks he's worth more. Um, and the World Baseball Classic would be a good place for him to kind of like show it off. Um, so yeah, I think that he probably wouldn't take a minor league deal, nor do I think that he deserves a minor league deal. I think that he would be an awesome backup catcher. I was looking at his numbers before too. And I think it was a little bit overblown just because of how like, crazy the hiccups were for gary defensively in new york Mm. but i think if you look at the stats as a whole gary sanchez isn't that bad of a catcher if you look at like the past if you just want to look at last season sure i would say he's serviceable um he's not he was he clearly was serviceable like according to all these numbers i thought you're gonna mention that his 20 even his 2021 offense like if you look at that like i feel like he was given a little bit of shit and yes that was carried by like that month where he was prime gary again but hit 23 homers at like a 730 OPS. I mean, if he were to be a backup, I think that's amazing. However, with the Yankees, though, he would have to be a minor league deal because, like, they're not going to sign him to not start oh, over Higgy, but to be the backup. Get over rid Higgy. of Higgy, bro. Get that's rid of That's not, Higgy. they're not going to get rid of catchers now, though. So I think Higgy's definitely, no, no matter no, what, on the no. opening day roster. But, bro, why, why can't Higgy be in AAA? Because Higgy's still pretty solid, too. I mean, part of the reason why I was down at Were you taking is Gary or has... Higgy? Well, Pat, like, I'm not going to get ahead of myself now. I mean, you my and will be the show Gary? franchise Gary, but like I, I'm definitely not gonna question the Yankees about Higgy over Gary. I mean, I think it's if you put both next to each other for 140 games, there's definitely some worlds where Gary has the better year. But I also will not like go to war against the Yankees for thinking Higgy's a better guy than Gary. Bro, but there's reason Gary to be interested. Higgy, any day of the week, any minor league deal, week, Pat. Bro. Minor league deal. Okay, well I disagree, but Gary Sanchez, Yankees' new backup catcher, book it. Um, yo. Topic number four here. Uh, this is our Anthony Rizzo 2023 season preview. We asked you guys last episode, we said, yo, pick the second one you want us to do with Cole. Most of the comments were Rizzo, so we're doing Rizzo. Um, I think Rizzo's kind of just, he's kind of just, I don't want to say he's just there, but it's kind of like you know what to expect it's from easy. Rizzo. Like it's easy. It's not much, yeah. it's not much of an in-depth projection we got to go on here, and I'll just kind of take it from here, I guess. The shift is the major story for me. Like, yeah. what is Anthony Rizzo going to be with there being no shift, there was a stat that came out that while he was a 224 hitter last year, I believe without the shift, he was at he would have been at 273. So 
That to me is the most interesting part about Anthony Rizzo this year. Besides that, you kind of know what you're going to get from him. He's going to be a great leader in the clubhouse. He's going to put up good defense at first base and hit you 30 homers and get on base. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that if the Yankees could get the 2022 production from Anthony Rizzo um, for the next couple of years, I think that they'll be more than satisfied. A guy with a, over 800 OPS and casually hitting 30 plus homers. Good in the playoffs, um, too. With, yeah. Yeah. With, with great defense and, and solid leadership in the clubhouse, I think. That's kind of what Anthony Rizzo's role is on this team, bro. It's just like a solid three, four hitter. And bro, like that's just, there's not enough good things I could say about Anthony Rizzo. I mean, maybe the only concern that I might have about him going into the season is the back thing, right? That's a legitimate with, concern too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, especially like as he ages. So yeah. And Rizzo also mentioned, sorry, Rizzo also mentioned how he thinks he'll be dealing with that the rest of his career, which kind of concerning, like he said, it will never fully go away. So that's not ideal, but the good news is what we saw happen last year. I mean, what was it August? He was dealing with that. He came back and he was, I guess, outside of Harrison Bader, our best hitter in the playoffs. So he was clearly able to get over it, but that's, if there's a concern, it, it definitely is that. So I guess I'll add something yeah. to my storyline of the year. It's the shift, how that'll impact him. And then yeah, the health. You're welcome. Um, but yo, let's get right into the over-unders with Rizzo. Yeah. Uh, this one, I, I bro, I think you put the line a little bit high. Um, this is for home runs, 32 and a half home runs. So his career high is 32, which he's done four times, including last year. Um, so it's basically asking the question, do we think Anthony Rizzo is going to hit more or less than the home runs he hit last year? I thought it was a good line. Is he going to finally get over the hump of 32 home runs? And I'm going to go with over, mainly because just me being optimistic, start of the year, I know this is how I'll be, though. He only played 130 games last year. Let's say he gets into 140. Does he have one or two more homers in him? I think so. So, yeah, I'll go with over. Although, if he hit 29 homers, it can still be a really good year. So, yeah. yeah. All right. I take it. Maybe, maybe it's not an awful line. Yeah. Thank you. God damn, bro. I was like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think I, I'm taking the under. Um, I think not, not by much. I think he'll probably finish with like 28 or 29 home runs. But I don't know, bro. I just can't see him like popping off and having like the greatest power season of his career. You know what you I mean? You know what? It's I'm going like... to take back actually my 29 statement. I, I guess I'd be cool with 29, but we I think we need 30 homers out of Rizzo. He is a three hitter yeah. after all. And you look at the lineup with not knowing necessarily what you'll get from the kids and the bottom three, four in the order. I think you do actually, you kind of want to bank on getting 30 from Rizzo. But of course the rate stats matter too. I mean, Let's hope he gets to at least uh, get that OBP up to maybe 340. The shift, of course, will help with that. And just, yeah, maintain the power. Um, Over under 250 batting average. Keep in mind, no shift. So do you think he's going to – I mean, in 2021 between the Yankees and Cubs, he had a 248. But last time we saw him at over 250 was in 2019 when he hit 293. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go under only because I don't want to buy in, like, too much. The shift is going to save him, quote-unquote. But I think you're looking at 248. I think he's at 248 with a OBP over 340. Yeah, I I think that's fair. I, I would probably go a little bit higher. I mean, give me like 255, Um, which at the end of the day, bro, it's kind of like wins when we were talking about with Cole. Like, it doesn't really matter as long as like the other stats are right. there. It's like, bro, if Rizzo, I mean, last year Rizzo batted 224, but he had an 817. Yeah, which yet. is pretty fucking bro. awful in a way. Like 220 is awful, but it, yeah, it doesn't no, matter because the power was there and everything else we talked about him was there. So definitely. Yeah. So so if Rizzo doesn't hit over 250, but the other numbers are there, I'll be satisfied. But, yo, yeah. I think this one's pretty easy. Good Yankee, bad Yankee. Great Yankee, Great. right? Great yeah. Yankee. Great Yankee. That's that's kind of all we have to say about that. I'm curious, yo. I think I brought this up before. If he plays the rest of his career with the Yankees, wins two rings. I think it would need at least two. Is there debate about, like, nah, never mind. He's not going like to be a Hall of Famer. I was going to say if he went into, like, the Hall of Fame, theoretically, like, would he go into the Yankee or Cub? But... He's. Oh, I th I thought you were asking like the Monument Park. Sure. Question. Would you think he'd be a Monument Park guy? Yeah. Say, say he finishes seven years, two rings, healthy, good con production throughout it all. Monument yeah. Park. Yeah. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't put it past the Yankees. I don't know if I would necessarily do it, but I wouldn't hate it either. Bro, because my take on it, I mean, dude, you're whack then for not wanting Paul O'Neill. Then I don't get into this whole thing though. No, but... no, because now <laughs> we're gonna restart. No, no, I'm, no, never mind. Paul O'Neill play. I don't care. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, relax. Let's skip also, right past yo, this topic. The day that they put Brett Gardner in, bro, Monument Park means nothing. Well, like, never... I'm just I'm throwing that out there. No. Also, that's my um. My His next... number's not in circulation, though. Bro. My next up number is Brett Gardner's 11. I think Volpe, if he doesn't take zero, should go with either 11 or 13. 
Just saying. But let's move on. I think we covered risk. I like 13. But I still think 13 should be retired, whatever. All right, Dan, getting to topic number five here. Um, get We're going to run through it quick here. Get it? Quick. Monty Peralta. Yeah. Mm. Um, Monty Peralta during a spring training game on Thursday, 22nd strikeout, which is kind of insane, bro. He went bang, bang, bang. Um, with the new pitch clock rules, I mean, I think we're this might be something we're going to see maybe not too frequently, but obviously, bro, like you're going to blink an eye and a batter no, is no longer going to be in the box. But yeah, I thought this was kind of just a cool point to bring up because we talked about the pitch clock last time. Um, I, I can't tell whether I'm like for or against this, but I just think it's it's unique. It's something unique we're going to see this season. I didn't know that was legal, dude. Honestly, like that is quick yeah. pitching if I ever saw it. I mean, nobody's on base, so I guess it's legal. But if that happens in a regular season game, I understand. I love Wandy Peralta. I think it's hilarious. But a hitter would probably be pretty chaffed. I mean, imagine like a legitimate regular season game. I don't know. Fucking. Oh, yeah. So they were playing the Padres. Loaded up Manny Machado. How about that contract, by the way? 350 mil. Manny Machado's in the box and like Wandy quick pitches in like that. Like, I feel like you might get a couple looks and like might get a couple pissed off batters, but it's technically legal. So, yeah, I guess we'll. We'll see it a little bit. It's yeah. I don't you like that. I'm so I don't like that's it's interesting. I feel like Wandy was kind of like having an experiment, but it's like okay, wait, wait, can I be honest? Wait, <laughs> let's just, wait, let's be honest. Cause I was just thinking to myself too. I'm like, I'm like trying to be nice about it because he's on the Yankees. Bro, if this was any other player on any other team, I'd I be was... so pissed off right now. Yeah. Okay, I hate this. I, I hate it. And we talked about the pitch clock. This is one of the things that I hate about the pitch clock, bro. That makes the game of baseball too quick. I'm sorry. Like, maybe it's, like, cool for entertaining casual fans. I don't want to see a 20-second at-bat. What they should do is MLB has said, and we do got to get out of here, so I'll say this really quick, but MLB has said they could potentially make some slight tweaks along the way uh, uh, with uh, interpretation of the rules. I'm curious if maybe the first few seconds they'll have the umpire start putting their hand up. Like, give the hitter three seconds to get in the box because – Technically, like, that's exactly what this wasn't, right? I mean, it was a second the batter put a foot in. And I think part of it was this dude was, like, looked like some rookie. I don't really know much about him. But you get any other established player, probably more so in regular season, like I said, you're going to get some looks. I don't think that'll fly, although it technically is legal. So, I don't know. Very interesting. Glad you brought that up. Wanda, you're still a dog, though. I mean, we love you to death. Yeah, no, love one. And, of course, it's him that does it, bro. He just had his time. And, of course, he throws three fucking straight pitches right down the middle. I just spit so much on the computer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, socials, where can they find you, Pat? TikTok and Twitter, at Unhinged Patrick, and then Instagram, at True Hennessy. We're Dan Allen Rourke on Twitter, Yankees Avenue on Instagram, Yankees Avenue here on YouTube. Subscribe, please, if you are new. Thank you guys for dealing with all these technical difficulties. I mean, shit, we had my what microphone last week. I guess they have no idea about the technical no, difficulties, but we've been fucking yeah. going through it. But point is, the season is coming up. Life is good. We're feeling good. Pat, let's get out of here, man. We'll see you guys next time. Let's go, Yankees.